The most powerful communicational tool in your hand is the contingent response, but I would like you to pause the video and check out the link in the resources. Please watch that video from the beginning to the end and come back, we are gonna talk about this later. Contingent responses is a very important skill. So basically, it is your reaction to any attempt of your child to communicate with you, whether these are words, uh, sounds, or gestures. So it can boost your baby's uh, interest in communicating, or it can kill it all at once. All depends on how you react. It also shows how important communication is and allows to model more sophisticated language skills. But the other question is how to have a one-sided conversation with your toddler who can't speak yet. That could be easily done through the watching of the child's body language, facial expressions, and eye gaze, or by interpreting toddler's word approximations. For instance, children will often use gestures to comment or to make a request. It could be a request for your help. For instance, when the toddler holding up an empty cup may mean, look, it's all gone, or it's empty and I'm still thirsty. So what you are doing, you just pronounce these phrases, oh, it's all gone, and you see reaction. If there is no reaction, then you ask, ah, you're still thirsty. And then if you see a response from the child uh, that you just give extra water in this case, again, you cover both, both of your um, guesses in your speech and just uh, watch after the baby's reaction. So for more information, please check the link in the resource. Uh, it has a fantastic article about this topic. Taking turns is the second uh, tool for language development. So make sure your kids have space to exercise their communication skills by getting a turn in that communication. Turns, they are not only about the speaking. So turn can be uh, anything, the eye contact or your child handing you a toy or reacting appropriately. Maybe your daughter will look at you because she needs help opening the box. And then you can say, you need help opening the box? Do you need my help? And after that, you can wait for her to hand you the box. So handing you a box is her turn in this conversation. She doesn't need to say anything in this case. Turn taking can be hard for parents because we used to take a lot of responsibility and charge for almost every situation. But you must make a space for your child so they can start participating in the conversations. Uh, try to ignore the urge of helping and answering for your kids. Uh, for instance, my mother, our, our grandmother, she has a fantastic skill of asking questions uh, and answering answering those questions by herself. So for instance, she's asking, how are you doing? Oh, are you okay? Uh, are you eating well? Yes, you're eating well. So she's asking questions and immediately uh, replies by herself. This is the way how she conducts the conversation in this case. And the child is just, um, you know, bombarded by the multiple questions and uh, thousands of replies without even having a minute of uh, talking by herself. So my approach, uh, how to deal uh, with my mother in this situation was to simply stop mother from asking more questions or replying. So one question, one reply from the child. One question, one reply from the child. You know, it took some time <clears throat> before my mother started to uh, follow these turn-taking patterns. As you can see, even seemingly adult and mature people have problems of taking and giving turns to each other. So make sure that every single adult in your family follows uh, this uh, rule number two about uh, taking turns in the conversation with the kid. Label praise is communication tool number three for, for the language development. The catch here is praise any behavior you like. Uh, say it in one phrase because any behavior that is rewarded will increase. So that's the rule. So if you like that your toddler picked the blocks from the floor, say it. Say it in the manner where in one sentence you say the praise and the action for which the praise for. For example, good job putting all the blocks back. For a child who is using some more words to communicate, you can say, nice job telling me that you you want apple juice or nice job saying uh, more apple juice please this will help create positive feelings around communication and motivate them to continue to try to add new words in their sentences reward cheer encourage your babies when they try to use language this one is the simplest rule uh, because whatever is rewarded is repeated Cross teaching is a communication tool number five in the language development, especially in the process of the multiple languages acquisition. 
So basically, cross-teaching refers to teaching, learning, and other educational activities that go beyond disciplinary boundaries. In terms of the several languages, we mean, we mean that you reteach some information in your language. Better to do it on the spot or shortly after the event or new information occurred. For example, let's say your husband is uh, explaining how to cook or explaining the body parts or whatever that involves a new concept and vocabulary. You don't want your kid to learn this procedure in one language only, so your best strategy is to join the communication process and explain the same procedure in your language. Uh, it just takes a few minutes on the spot and it will prevent the child from future language mixing and um, code switching. Because if they learn the concept, the same concept in both languages at the same time, then they don't need to, you know, to borrow some vocabulary from one language to use it in another, to insert that vocabulary in another language to explain something. So we will talk more about this in the section where I talked about the about the influence of the school and the cultural environment. So, but in essence, cross teaching means you reteach concept or idea in your language. Limit testing. Limiting testing is also a good tool for the language development. If you know that your child knows which sound the pig makes, don't ask him or her over and over again. The same with the color, shapes, or whatever. Your child already knows, so don't ask what color is the goldfish. Testing your kid during the playtime instead of playing with your child it can be very stressful. And um, you can ask those questions a little bit in a different manner. For instance, I wonder where the pig is going. Going, or I wonder what color should be the, this tractor. I wonder where the apples are growing. In this case, you invite your child to participate in the conversation, but not forcing him. And you don't don't put him or her uh, on the spot like a deer in the headlight. Just because his head or he, her head is occupied with the different uh, things that are inside of your child may have simply different plans for the playtime. So uh, take the testing easier and try to. Minimize it whenever it's inappropriate. Eliminate negative talk. Unexpectedly, when you eliminate negative talk from your speech, it becomes a positive tool in the language development. So try not to say things like, that's not where the cow goes, or when they are coloring, the sky isn't pink. Remember, we want to encourage all attempts to communicate and validate those attempts so that kids try to do more of them. We all respond better to more positive phrasing. Your child is not exclusion. Try to try to avoid correction in general. A childhood is a, such a time when they just need to blossom. You don't need to suppress them with uh, conventional norms and standards. So eliminate your negative talk and your child will start, start better speaking. Unexpectedly, the very beaten up uh, internet phrase keep a positive attitude can be a tool in the multiple languages development. Basically, what it means is that don't get upset if something goes wrong, because it will go wrong. The baby may refuse to play with you or repeat after you or to speak one language or drop another language. So you shouldn't get upset and you shouldn't give up. What you need to do is just to change the tactics, uh, how you do the things. So if you normally play this way and the child normally paid attention to you and uh, learned something from you, but then unexpectedly the child is no longer paying attention and don't want to do things, uh, then just change your tactics. Try to use a consequential line of thinking. A consequential line of thinking is, for instance, if you don't do this, then those consequences are coming. And if you do this, then this reward is coming. You may use this type of conversation with the child as early as, uh, I don't know, from the birth. They love to listen how adults speaking, especially with emotions and the face. So you just put your reasoning into the good, long speech. And as a rule, your child is back on track and they are willing to continue playing with you. And so just keep in the head. Whenever something goes wrong, change your tactics. Don't get upset. If you know that you are that person who is getting upset, just then try to step out from the situation. Um, use the consequential line of defense and speeches in your conversations with the child and change the tactics as often as you can if something doesn't work. 
And one more time, on the quantity of language input, we consider consistency, environment, and human interaction. When all those three components are working at the same time around your child, that increases the amount of the language around. It's not just a simple conversation or a simple interaction or monologue or dialogue or something. So you now know that every single part of the equation is working for the same purpose.